Oh, I, you caught me in the middle of posing there. Welcome to the Filmmaker IQ Video Basement. Today we're gonna to review the Sony HD AX2000. The Sony AX2000 is Sony's first prosumer ABC HD camera. I'm not too familiar with the ABC HD format myself. This is the first time I've really int been introduced to that format. But what, I can, what I've seen so far, I can say it's actually a step up from the old HDV format that was popular among the earlier generation of HD cameras. The AX2000 is a completely tapeless camera. It shoots on two of these either SDHC cards or Sony Pro Media Sticks. It's a 32 gigabyte card that they sent in with this camera. On this single card you can record up to 180 minutes, that's uh, three hours of footage. Two of these cards together you'll be shooting six hours without ever changing any kind of, uh, any kind of card. And so as for someone coming from the Sony XD cam with the S by S technology where those cards can run you about $700 for an 8 gigabyte card, for a 32 gigabyte card looking at about $200, that's frankly relatively cheap. And the great thing about that is they're reusable. So you just shoot, you shoot on it, back it up, format, and shoot again. Let's talk about controlling your image with the Sony AX2000. Now on the front you'll notice that we have a little matte box here which this is not a new feature, but I'm always, I always like to show it off. This matte box comes complete with its own built-in uh, lens cap. We'll switch on the side here, it pops it open, closes it up. I don't care, that's not new technology, I still think it's cool. Moving along the barrel, we have three separate rings here. The first one is the focus ring, the second one we have a zoom ring, and the third which we have the iris ring which is kind of a more intuitive way of controlling the iris. Before we had little knobs and rollers, but nothing quite like the tactile feel of a, of a ring to actually turn the iris up and down. Now all three of these rings are servo driven, so they're no, you're not actually controlling the lens, you're controlling a controller that controls the electronic device that controls the lens. As far as the tactile feeling, the, each of the rings have their own distinct feel, although I just don't feel like the iris ring feels different enough from the zoom ring. I can easily see myself grabbing the zoom thinking I was controlling the iris. Moving further back along the barrel, the newest thing about this camera is we have a third level ND filter. The ND filter is kind of like sunglasses for your camera. So you have three levels and that's great for shooting outdoors, especially when you're outdoors with a lot of light. It's really easy to just throw it, on, throw it on ND filter 3 and then you can open up your iris quite a bit. Further back, a well, nice little feature about this camera is the negative six gain. They've added this since the uh, last cameras I've seen. Negative six gain basically reduces the amount of video noise in your blacks in the dark areas of your video. Now to help keep your shots in focus, Sony has this expanded focus feature button which is right here on the top of the camera. And what that does is it zooms in on the image into your, in your LCD viewfinder, allowing you to get a better critical focus. Now my favorite feature of camcorders is something called electronic peaking. What that does is it creates a highlight around the sharp areas of your video, letting you know that that is, that is in focus. Now for the longest time I thought there was no peaking on this camera, but I was able to find it. Find it. Finally, digging through the menu I found the electronic peaking. Now, I personally would have rather have them put that little feature on the side here, make it a little button that says peaking, and you can push it, but that's okay. You have six customizable buttons that can that allow you to customize them to whatever you want. I customize number four here for peaking. The AX2000 also features kind of a consumer level feature, it's a touch screen. I'll show you that here if I go into mode, and you'll see I have a touch screen here, and go into, let's say, if I wanted to see what clips we have in here, so we hit play the visual index. It's kind of a nice little feature to have, although I'd rather not have it because it kind of, it basically wants me to smudge up my view screen with my fingerprints and my fingers aren't always the cleanest things in the world. Let's talk a little bit more about the AVC HD format this camera records in. This camera records in several formats of different flavors of, uh, of HD 1080. It records 60i, 30p, 24p, and also in various various data rates um, as far as 24 megabits a second down to I think it was like 8 for the long play version. A feature that's lacking in this camera was kind of become a commonplace feature in other uh, tapeless cameras is the ability to do over cranking and under cranking. 
Overcranking is when you record more frames a second than you're gonna play back. And what that does is it creates an ultra smooth, slow motion. And undercranking being the opposite. You record fewer frames than you're gonna play back. That way when you play it back, it's, everything's in fast motion. The extreme of undercranking would be something like time-lapse photography. So you see those features in other cameras. This particular model doesn't have that. This camera does have a smooth, slow record. That records a burst of about, uh, I think, five seconds of video and plays it back in slow motion. But it's not the same as something you'd see in a uh, Panasonic HVX or even an EX1 camera. This camera records onto Exmor 3 CMOS chips. And because it is a CMOS chip camera, it is, uh, it is subject to the rolling shutter uh, artifact that we've all heard so much about. The rolling shutter camera effect is going to become most prominent when you're shooting some, something involving a flash, like a flash photography. Especially if you shoot like a wedding, you're going to see the screen kind of cut in half as the, fla as the flash kind of rolls down through the frame. Now one thing this camera sorely lacks is an instant replay button. And that's a button you press and it replays the very last take. I find that very useful when you're doing like a dolly shot, where you're doing some sort of steady cam shot, where you just want to see what, ha what, you, what was the last take, how did it look. Now this camera doesn't have it, that's kind of a shame. That's something that I would really like to see on this thing. Also, you won't be able to do any kind of control, you won't be able to manipulate the time code. Say if you want a certain particular time code or you want to sync up a couple cameras using time code, you won't be able to do it with the AX2000. There's a lot of little tiny engineering features about the AX2000 that we don't have time to talk about in this review. So please check out the written article where you'll find all the details over at FilmmakerIQ.com. The AX2000 is a solid camera. Now in this world we're seeing groundbreaking technology. We see the RED camera, we see the HD DSLR cameras, we see the Apple i whatever. We're kind of used to seeing groundbreaking stuff. Well, there's nothing really groundbreaking about the Sony AX2000. It is, however, a solid camera. It is a example of a maturing market segment, the market segment of the prosumer camera. You're seeing the camera really come into being and really seeing the options really get mature and begin a solid platform. I think this is a great camera if you're interested in shooting event videography, documentaries, wedding videos, any kind of, uh, any kind of, any kind of events, event style shooting. Well, that's it. That's about all I've got to say on the AX2000. I'm John Hess, and we'll see you over at FilmmakerIQ.com.